As they embark on the Henley course now, we're underway with this heat of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. Brunswick School, USA on the right-hand side of your screen. Westminster School on the left-hand side of your picture. And uh, my word, you're not going to miss Westminster, are you, Greg? You never miss Westminster as we see them here. Really winding their stroke rate up, getting away and looking pretty smooth in terms of how well they're moving together. I just wonder whether Brunswick will have just a little bit more power than them as we're coming through the island here. But let's see. Um, it's looking like we could be in for a late in the day. Really good, exciting Henley race. Pretty much bow ball for bow ball at the top of the island. Yeah, what a start here by these two crews and Westminster School just a few weeks on from coming fifth at the National Schools Regatta, out of the medals, but certainly in the mix with a calibre of uh, schoolboy rowing at that National Schools event that is just getting better and better every year. And so I feel fifth this year is probably good enough to have you a medal a few years back. Well, you can see uh, that they're really moving well together. You see the stroke rate on the screen there, 35 strokes a minute or thereabouts. And they're just able to be just a little bit more efficient, I think, than Brunswick, because both crews, you can see the blades going into the water almost exactly together, stroke for stroke, but it's whether you're that little bit more efficient. And I think Westminster had the efficiency right now. Will Brunswick have the power to be able to come back? Yeah, Brunswick, the... Uh New England champions from the New England Interscholastic Rowing Association regatta are, uh, are looking to, well, they're, they're, they've got a deficit, almost a length here behind Westminster School. Yeah, both crews have settled into their rhythms, come down to about that 35 strokes a minute, but Westminster have just been able to keep moving away. So for the first minute, absolutely neck and neck, bow ball for bow ball, but then in that second minute of the race, Westminster have been able to take that one length lead. Um, so, yeah, great efficiency from this crew that, as you say, finished fifth at the national schools, but we know what a high quality, high caliber competition that is. Westminster, who train out of uh, a boathouse on the Putney embankment on that iconic stretch of water on the tideway where the boat race takes place, where the head of the river takes place in London. And certainly a programme that has produced some great athletes in years gone by. They lead by uh, clear water now over the crew from Brunswick School USA. But they... Um, they're still working hard, Greg. Certainly no settle, it seems, as yet for Westminster. Yeah, no, certainly no settle. They're just keeping it ticking along. Just thinking about Patrick Moody in the coxing seat for Westminster. Um, he kept the crew really on their station. Now it looks like he's wandered out just a little bit. As you see that drone in the centre of our picture, that will is what, of course, brings you the shots we see so often. We're up on a crane from this picture we can see now. This is now going to be that drone shot, which will swing us around. Nice little interesting thing, you can see those straws on the side of the boat. Um, if you just catch those, marking the lengths for the Westminster rowers to make sure they come out to full length, and just tap their hands against the straw, which is stuck to the side of the boat. Um, and that stroke length is keeping them moving. And Brunswick here have let a big deficit go. Um, it's very tough to know what they're going to be able to do about this. But I mean, looking at this crew from Brunswick, they don't they don't slow, Greg. I'm just going to you know, say that now. I think that they, they do look like they move really well together. I'm just trying to pick out what the key differences are between them and Westminster, really. Um, I just think that they're, they're a little bit loose around the finish, aren't they? Just not quite holding the water all the way through in comparison to Westminster. Yeah, I mean, there's a workman-like style to this Brunswick crew. You know, they get the blades in, they move them through, they do everything pretty much as you would like to hope, as you would like to expect. It's just whether there's a little bit more lightness and a little bit more relaxation um, on the Westminster crew. As we have a look here, and the boat just kind of pitching around a little bit, dipping down, see the rigger in front of us, just dipping towards the, the, uh, the water a little bit, the blades maybe just coming a little bit loose. So just losing a bit of efficiency compared to the smoothness of the boat on the right, where the yeah, we, we see this Westminster crew. You might be able to see those straws there or whatever those markers are. So each rower comes out and just taps the blade against the straw and then lifts their hands and puts the blade in the water. But there's a sort of quietness and a calm uh, in that, that Westminster boat, which is it's close, 
is close to perfect in the Brunswick boat, but just not quite there. Yeah, and I, I think those little straws that you keep talking about there are on that uh, Westminster boat, uh, especially important into this wet headwind we've been talking about all day, right? You don't want to be losing any uh, water, any distance around the front end of the stroke, which is when the athletes put their blades into the water there. Uh, you want to make sure you're pushing all the way through, because any time your blades out the water, you're being blown the wrong way, Greg. You certainly are, and those straws will be set up to a position of about 57 degrees, so the athlete comes forward to about 57 degrees, so that, that blade gets locked into the water at the right point. All the blades get locked into the water. And like you say, in a headwind like this, you really need that length. Sometimes in a tailwind, you can almost get away with just cutting it short and getting onto the next stroke. Not in a condition, in the conditions we're seeing here, albeit that this headwind has definitely dropped off from what we had earlier in the day. You still just need to keep long connected strokes because it's the blade being connected in the water that moves the boat and almost the longer it's in the water the further it's moving the boat per stroke so there is the crew from westminster school you can just see the shades of the the cox patrick moody who uh, if you listen carefully you can just hear giving commands there to the rest of the crew the cox very important to ensure that uh, those technical elements, you know, are being adhered to any of those coaching tidbits that they've been given before going out on the water. Yeah, they've also got some bits of tape on those oars, haven't they? So you can see how deep they're supposed to go, the pink bit goes in the water, and then maybe those two rounds of tape and no more. Um, so again, just little markers to help give the athletes cue, to give the cox cues, so he knows what he can call out for, what he can look out for, and they know what good rowing looks like, as well as learning what it feels like. Very keen eye there from you, Greg, on all of the technical elements there, and it's worked well for Westminster School, who will uh, look back on Brunswick School USA into the distance here in the cool evening of the Tuesday of Henley Royal Regatta in this heat of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup, and there is the confirmed result. Westminster School beating Brunswick School USA. Let's go to Brunswick!